One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. 
But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. What will it be like, the kingdom? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Please be seated. What will it be like, the kingdom? This is the haunting question along the backdrop of today's gospel that Mary Magdalene actually asks Jesus in a number of gospels as a preeminent witness she was to the path Jesus was laying out. The closest disciple of Jesus who he called the apostle to the apostles. The woman who was by his side in his earthly life. The woman who stood by him as he hung on the cross. The woman who stood by him graveside after his death. The woman who witnessed the empty tomb. And the woman who first anxiously greeted his post-resurrected body, unaware of who he really was, mistaking him for the gardener before Jesus brought her into being with the sound of her name. Mary, Rabboni, teacher. We've been walking through this terrain from Lent to Easter and now to the season after Pentecost. The longest season in our church year where we are asked, what will it be like? The kingdom. I was on a continuing education retreat in Maine this past week, diving directly into what type of mystical courage might look like when we embody the posture and question of Mary Magdalene. As we actively choose, like she did, to keep within in order to rise. Knowing very intimately that holding a contemplative heart in the bareness of your hands isn't easy. Knowing how sometimes it feels like holding the tip of a match between your fingers. The burning bush Moses encountered that was on fire but not consumed but out of which came the name of God as we know it, and we bow before this very day. I am. I am. I will be who I will be. In other words, there is no box that contains God. And how amazing, how amazing is this expansiveness? How inconceivable is it to see the path of Jesus and what has become Christianity as an open system that grows and grows and grows. 
while it pours out self-emptying love at every turn. The way of Jesus was and is the way of surrender. And we can barely grasp this reality because we want to store up and store up and store up everything for ourselves. We want to hoard ourselves into existence because I think we're terrified that Jesus' words might be true, that in order to lose our life, we find it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. How does surrender help us see? What will it be like? The kingdom, Mary Magdalene asks. And we ask ourselves this same question today. Today's gospel, according to Mark, is from chapter 4, a pivotal chapter in one of our earliest known gospels. And as I sat with the entire chapter this past week, these passages spoke loudly in conversation with today's parable. So I'd like to read excerpts of the chapter um, to better settle in the stage for the opening of what's no doubt one of the most famous parables ever. Jesus says this, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds of the air came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed, Jesus says, fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing, and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, as he does, let anyone with ears to hear, listen. He then says to them that popular song most of us might have grown up with as a kid, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. I don't know who knows that. Um, I'm dating myself, but I'm going to let it shine. Or to quote Jesus' words specifically, is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And finally, he says, the text before us this morning, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use it for? In other words, what will it be like, the kingdom? And Jesus says this, it is like a mustard seed which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, 
so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. What an image. By definition, a mustard seed is about one to two millimeters in size. It's tiny. It's about the size of a pinpoint. At least 50 mustard seeds could fit on your fingernail. In the right climate, mustard seeds germinate eight to 10 days and grow into massive invasive shrubs, good to note, into trees where even the birds of the air can settle in its branches for shelter, for growth, for refuge. Sometimes the gospel comes to life in the real world. Sometimes the gospel grows from the dirt we see and know and can touch with our bare hands. Sometimes Jesus walks among us in the seeds we've planted and hands us our fruit. If we get the foundation right. We know the parable of the house built on sand that crumbles and the house that builds on rock that's built on rock that weathers the storm. Foundations are important. Foundations are important. Building a fortified foundation is necessary for growth and flourishing, right? This is Father Andrew's <laughs> continual message to us to be rooted, grounded, growing, and thriving in God's life and love. This parable begs that question. Are we deeply rooted enough in the right kind of ground to weather life's greatest griefs, joys, and challenges? Do we have the inner waypoint of a single heart? We must know that the basis of our life is solid. We must have a tilled garden in which this tiny mustard seed can thrive. A city built on a hill, Jesus also says, cannot be hidden. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm gonna let it shine. What will it be like, the kingdom? I think it looks like light shining in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Over and over, in the language of the parables that Jesus chose to speak in, over and over, he lays this path before us. The path says this, there is nothing to be renounced or resisted. Everything can be embraced. But the catch, the catch is to cling to nothing. You let it go. You go through life like a knife through a cake, picking up nothing, clinging to nothing, sticking to nothing. And then you can throw yourself out, pour yourself out, being able to give it all back, even giving back life itself. That's the path of surrender in a nutshell. That's the life of the mustard seed tossed into the garden of God. It's very, very simple. It only costs everything. What will it be like? The kingdom, Mary Magdalene asks. And Jesus answers, it is like a single grain of a mustard seed that a woman sowed in her garden. And it grew and it grew until the birds of the air made nests in its branches. That tiny seed becomes larger than life. What we sow in the garden of God matters. How we sow seeds Excuse me. <clears throat> How we sow seeds in the garden of God matters. And each of our hands and beings matter as we toil the generative soil of our lives, individually and together, in ways that serve the common good.
As I hiked last week around a quarry in Maine, I sensed the foghorn in the distance, keeping the heartbeat of the week in a slow, steady pace. It felt like the primordial breathing of the great I am. And along the forest's path, I noticed how all the roots wove under and then up through the ground. And I was immediately struck by a line from one of my wife's poems she sent me back when we were dating. It said this, roots above ground are in my nature. Roots above ground are in my nature. So what will it be like, the kingdom? I think it's like the most insignificant ingredient of ourselves that activates to become fertilizer for manifestation. I think it's what we deem the most insignificant ingredient of ourselves that activates and becomes fertilizer for our manifestation. Because I think it's the very act of surrender that lets us see. Somehow, surrendering gives us vision. We can be a city built on a hill that cannot be hidden. We can be a fire that can shine. We can be a home built on solid ground. If we plowed the ground of our inner lives so that the seed of divine life planted within each one of us can grow. It only takes yearning. It only takes an ounce of our faith. It only takes an ounce of our will. It only takes an ounce of our hope to be buried in the ground like a time capsule so it can grow bit by bit into a home for the flying creatures of the heavens. May it be so. I'd like to invite our baptismal family to stand. The congregation may be seated for the first part of the baptismal service. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. We present Susanna Zakiri. Michael Zakiri, Verona Zakiri, and Artie Zakiri to receive the sacrament of baptism. Suzanne, do you desire to be baptized? Michael, do you desire to be baptized? Verona, do you desire to be baptized? Artie, do you desire to be baptized? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Amen. Inviting us now all to stand. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for the Zakiri family who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open to your grace and, and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Open them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the Zakiri family to come forward. Here. 
भी नो प्रॉब्लम है इसलिए नो परेशान सुजैन आई बैप्टाइज यू इन द नेम ऑफ द फादर एंड ऑफ द सन एंड ऑफ द होली स्पिरिट आमेन Amen. Suzanne, receive the light of Christ. Let's lean over, Michael. Michael, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. and of the holy spirit amen michael you are marked by the holy spirit and baptism and sealed with god's own forever amen michael receive the light of christ just lean over verona I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verona, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked with Christ's own forever. Verona, receive the light of Christ. Arty, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Arty, receive the light. of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood the peace of the lord be always with you with you. you thank you all right i'm going to be peace thank you so much yeah suzanne peace i'm so happy thank you <laughs> yeah michael i'm proud of you thank you so much yeah thank you you can you can head back now you can blow out the candles for now yeah Peace to you all and welcome. That was so joyous and beautiful and um I'm so grateful. And I just want to uh say a special word of thanks to my daughter Hannah and Hannah and Verona became friends uh in the last couple years and Verona started attending youth group and Bible study and being part of our life and it was about a month ago that Verona said I want to be baptized. 
And I said, yay. And, and then, Verona turned, then Verona turned around and said, my whole family wants to be baptized. And I said, yay again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to the Zakiri family, welcome to your St. Gregory's family. We are so proud of you and so full of joy today. And you can put out your candles now, but I know it feels like it, you've just lit them, but I understand that. <laughs> beautiful. Wow, what a beautiful day and a week in our life in Christ. A few announcements to highlight. One is that following the service today, our ECW has a pop-up art sale as we're trying to clear out some of our uh, various things that have been uh, for sale, but not for sale because of the pandemic. Uh, we've got a, a pop-up art sale outside, so stop by on your way out and uh, see if there's anything that catches your fancy. Tomorrow, big day in the life of the church, construction begins. And for those who are keen-eyed, you can actually see the first construction vehicle has already arrived and is parked in the corner of the parking lot. So it's very exciting. I ask your prayers for our construction workers uh, who begin their work tomorrow. Uh, and uh, it's, it's so exciting. And I said this last week, and I'll say it again. We've already raised through our pledges everything that will cover the phase one of our construction. And we've raised 750000 towards our interior renovation as our phase two fundraising continues. So we're very excited that we're at a point. Uh, we've got a ways to go still, um, but I'm grateful to God and the gifts that have been given to us. Uh, so um, join me in giving thanks. And on a practical note, the third week in a row I've said this, half the parking lot's gonna be gone starting tomorrow. So next week when you come, uh, just remember that you're only gonna be able to park in half the parking lot. We're gonna reserve some um, slots for our senior members. Uh, and just a reminder, I've walked it 100 yards that way is the Meisner parking garage with 200 spots. Um, so there's plenty of parking, good exercise. 100 yards that way, 100 yards this way. There's, and if you don't want to do the 100 yards each way, right across the street is the post office. Uh, we'll also allow people to park on the grass on this side of the church. So there'll be plenty of opportunities uh, for people to park uh, as we start. But do know that as the construction continues, different parts of the parking lot will be used. So it may be that one week you're parking in this part of the lot, next week another part of the lot. So I'm asking everyone to just exercise grace and adaptability. Is that what we've learned during the pandemic year? Grace and adaptability. So grace and adaptability uh, as we enter into this construction phase. Some other announcements. Uh, one is that on this Wednesday at 7.30, we're hosting the diocesan Juneteenth celebration. Juneteenth, of course, celebrates the liberation of the enslaved Americans at the end of the Civil War, and our whole diocese will be gathering uh, here at St. Gregory's at 7.30. You're all invited to be part of that service, and we'll also be live streaming that as well on our Facebook page. Summer Sunday School starts next week. Thanks to Sylvia Hall. There's Sylvia, our Summer Sunday School teacher. Uh, she'll be looking forward to starting Summer Sunday School. So for the children who are in grades five and below, uh, Sunday, Summer Sunday School starts. For teenagers, we certainly invite you to be teacher assistants if you'd like to help with that. Uh, so thank you, Sylvia, once again uh, for offering that ministry. Uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we're giving thanks and celebrating the life of Jean Martin, truly one of the pillars of St. Gregory's, uh, someone who gave so much of herself to this congregation, as did her husband Jerry before her. And so at 11 a.m. on Saturday, we're celebrating Jean's life and interring her ashes in the columbarium. Finally today, it's my great joy to uh, invite Sam Bevan to come forward and also Juan Lopez to come forward on behalf of the brothers, Sam and Juan. Sam is the recipient, yeah, you, uh, Juan, you can use that, mic, uh, that lectern, thank you. Sam is the recipient this year of the brothers scholarship, exactly, and I'll, I'll say, Juan will say a few words about the brothers and then I'll say a few words about Sam, Juan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Juan Lopez. I am one of the co-directors of the Brothers Group, 
and I'm happy to be back. It's been more than a year since I've come to a regular service here in the House of Worship, so nice to see a lot of familiar faces in a long time, and some new faces too. Um, so I've been co-directing the Brothers Group, I think, for the past two, two years and a half. And um, what we do is that we do a monthly Brothers Breakfast, some of you have been. And I just found out recently that we may be restarting the Brothers Breakfast in November. So we're all excited about that. Phil Hall behind me. Uh, he will, yes, okay. So uh, Phil Hall was behind me, also helping with the Brothers Group. And of course, we always welcome new members and existing members to help us and join the Brothers Group. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be starting the dinners yet, but um, once we go back to normal, uh, we usually have a monthly dinner where we talk about what the brothers are doing, we have a little bit of Bible study, and it's just a, a nice time to hang out and con con talk to each other and have a good time, and of course, be close with each other. I mean, this is a great church. Um, me, today, I just wanted to say that when I came in, after such a long time, it just really lightens up. So I want to welcome all of you. Congratulations on your baptism. This is a great place to be and a great thing to do. So this is a really wonderful place. I think it's more of a blessing for me than for you guys for me to be here right now, to be honest. So it's a very <laughs> nice place to be. So, um, And then later, we'll get more information about the brothers. You'll be, you'll be hearing more about us starting in November. Um, I just do want to say that I know we were presenting rewards to Sam Beaven. I personally don't talk a lot with him, but I've seen him a lot. I know that he is a very active member of this church. I really want to congratulate you. What have you done? I read your essay. You're very well written. And uh, congratulations. So. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. So let me just say, uh, in addition to what Juan has said, Sam has been uh, a member of the church, gosh, I don't know how long he's been a member, since he was a lot smaller than he is now. And uh, Sam, Sam has been an active leader in our youth group for the last four years, uh, and he and Hannah led our Bible study this past year, and um, Sam has given so much of himself uh, to leadership and ministry here at St. Gregory. So Sam, I'm very proud of you and very happy to present the scholarship to you. Uh, I'm told by our parish administrator you'll actually get the money this week, so I don't have it to give you today. But congratulations. Bless you. <laughs> Sam is off to one of Mr. Jefferson's universities, William & Mary in Virginia, and really excited uh, for the next phase uh, of his journey. So bless you, bless you, bless you, Sam. Wow, wasn't that fun? Lots of good stuff. Great to see everyone. Uh, and I do want to just say a welcome to all our online worshipers as well. Edmundo, I expect to see you in church next week. Your wife is here. Uh, and uh, blessings to all. We look to have everyone get engaged with life and ministry here at St. Gregory's. Birthday blessings and anniversary blessings. Who's celebrating a birthday and an anniversary? Look, Jane jumped right up as well. And Linda, you have a birthday as well? Great, wonderful anybody else those are two birthdays sam you got a birthday gosh i missed that you this is your day <laughs> uh and gabe you've got you've got a birthday to one of our ushers gabe bodner wonderful um keep standing and you get a double blessing today sam let us pray oh i'm sorry uh oh we, uh, joanne and jack you guys have a wedding anniversary yeah sorry did yeah got you at the corner of my eye i'm glad i saw you yeah let us pray Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those moments and times in our lives where we are so grateful for your abiding presence and love. Keep us rooted, grounded, growing, thriving in your life and love. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day, this year, and always. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, um, Grace just asked where Hannah was going to college. Hannah's going to the University of South Florida. Go Bulls! <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand. And yes, we've just come from the fountain. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your glory. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out to you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ, Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Gregory, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation 
to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit to you be honor glory and praise forever and ever amen And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Today during communion, Father Ben will be offering communion in the chapel as well as myself offering communion at the front of the church. Uh, so for those seated on this side of the church, uh, if you'd like to exit out on the side aisle and move to the chapel. I hope that's clear. Father Ben will be offering communion there. But we'll make sure everybody gets fed today. Don't worry. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have knighted us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with your, your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length, the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, within you, and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.